Hey there guys, welcome back, hope you're all doing well, this is Chetan here from Double Cube, and I'm back again today with another awesome tutorial and this is going to be in Adobe XD where I'm going to be showing you 12 awesome power tips and tricks to work faster and work better in Adobe XD and, and also it will make sure that you stand out in front of other designers because you know these cool stuff which they do not. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright guys, so before we get started with the tutorial, I just want to say that if you guys haven't checked out my master course on Adobe XD, which is available on YouTube for free, the link will be in the description. Uh, please do check that out if you guys are interested to learn about user interface designing because it consists uh, because the whole course takes you through understanding what Adobe XD is, what is the uh, what is UI and UX, how to design, how to prototype, the guidelines, how to export, share, and a lot of amazing stuff which you'll, which you need to know as a designer and get started with Adobe XD and maybe turn you into an awesome UI designer so link will be in the description obviously it's for free because it's on YouTube and yeah so um, here I am in Adobe XD and this was an app that I worked on uh, recently for a challenge on Uplabs and uh, these were all the screens that I created but um, I'm gonna be just talking to you guys about the tips right so let's get started with the first tip now the first one is to name your artboards in the layers panels with an emoji so for example if i come here to my layers panel i have this uh, artboard called as guides if i double click on it and i say uh, the guides uh, iphone 10 which was actually for the iphone 10 uh, you know and i click away you see it kind of updates over here again but let's say i want to add an emoji so i don't think there is a i don't know how to do that with the keyboards shortcuts but there is a website online called as emoji keyboard.org and all you have to do is just select a random emoji and uh, you know just click, click on copy message and i can uh go back to this double click on that and i can just paste it and boom we have our emoji sitting right here which is pretty cool Okay, so the next thing is to copy and paste artboards. Now, this is something that you guys might know, but uh, some people, what they do is they go ahead and create a new artboard. And what some people, other people do is they select this, hold on Alt, and then just drag that out, which creates another uh, uh, you know, artboard. But um, the fastest way is to just select it, press Control C to copy and press Control V to paste and paste one right down below or wherever there is space for it. Right, so that's number two. Okay, moving on to power tip number three. Now, let's say I have this um, element over here, and as you can see, it's inside a group. So if I select this, the entire object moves, but there are three elements in this. So this is, we have the background, which is basically the box, and then we have the icon, and then we have some text. Now, for example, I wanna select only the text. If I click on it, you see it selects the entire group. Now, what I would have to do is I would come into the layers panel and then just click on this, which is gonna select that. But a quicker way is to do, is to hold on control on your keyboard or command, I think if it is on your Mac, I'm not sure, and just click once, and that's gonna automatically jump into all the groups that are present and select the uh, text directly and I can just move around this text and nothing else moves another thing is to double click which also does it but when you double click it takes you one layer down so it selects this group and if I have to select this I need to double click again to take me down below to another level under the group so the next one is uh, called as uh, pasteboards now if I close everything up over here, let's just close everything up. You see we have all these artboards, but if I go ahead and just create a circle just like so, all right, and I move back, you see I get this new uh, uh, artboard called as the pasteboard, but what pasteboard does is basically kind of uh, something that you can place all, all around the artboards uh, for reference. For example, you have a couple of notes or images or you know pictures or something that you want to refer, you can just paste it. And when you're exporting it, the items on the pasteboard do not get exported, only the elements on the artboards get exported. So you don't have to worry about deleting everything else around the artboard when you're exporting. So the next one is a very cool and very handy shortcut, which I don't think a lot of people know. In fact, I would just say like 10% of the users know. Now, now let's say I'm completely zoomed out and I want to fit the all the, uh, I want to fit the artboards to the screen. All I have to do is press Control and Zero on my keyboard, which is going to fit it. Now, for example, I go ahead and you know I'm just placing these icons over here and I want to see how it looks at 100%. So what I would do is I would press Control Zero, but what that does it it kind of you know 
put all, puts all the artboards in the center of the screen. But what I want to do is I want only this artboard. So what I would have to do is I would click here to select the artboard and press Ctrl three and when I press control three it's going to go ahead and um, you know fit this artboard to the screen now if I want to go and select this text and I press control three you see it's going to fit the element which I have selected into the artboard and if I have if I want to if if I select both of this and press control three, it's going to select these two and then fit this to the screen. And probably let's say I want um, these three artboards to be in my screen. I can press control three and only these three get fit into my screen. Let's select these two and try that once control three. And there you go. Only these two elements are, I mean, these two artboards fit into the screen, which is a very useful and a handy um, tip. All right, moving on to the next one, which is uh, related to prototyping. Now, if I come here to my prototype section, um, you see I have all these artboards and I'm gonna go ahead and just quickly link these uh, to give you guys an idea as to what I'm talking about. All right, so there you go. Um, let's actually uh, select this and yeah, all right. So now I've created this prototype, as you can see over here. And if I go here to the share button and I click on create link, it's going to go ahead and create a link for me, which I can share to other people. I talk more about this in the master course. So if you guys are interested, definitely do check that out. And as you can see, uh, I've uh, a link has been created and what I can do is I can click on copy link and I can go to my browser and then just paste it over here. And that's going to open up the prototype uh, on your browser. And it's going to look something like this. Now, if I click, you see it goes to my next screen which I had prototype and if I click on this object it's going to take me to this. Now this feature is very useful at the end of the stage of design where you're testing it with a couple of users. So now let's say you want you don't you want the the user to find out everything about the app itself without you telling him and you give him this file uh, so and you give him this link and you say let me know what you what do you think of this um, of this prototype. So what he's going to do is going he's going to start clicking. So if I click over here you see that we get this and if I click anywhere else apart from the element that has been linked you see if I click somewhere over here it becomes blue in color but maybe you don't want the user to know where are the clickable elements so what you would have to do is you would come here to your browser and type question mark hints is equal to off all right so question mark Hints is equal to off and just hit enter and that's going to go ahead and reload the entire prototype and now when I click it comes to the second screen but on this screen if I click anywhere else you see that the blue hints that was being shown earlier is now turned off which now gives you an idea of what the user is trying to do when he sees this particular screen which helps you to improve the user experience by moving around the elements here and there which is a very handy feature so that's tip number six now the next tip is a pretty fun one so let me show you that um, this one is live update to the play feature so if i come here and click on this play button which is the desktop preview uh you see this is what we have now maybe i don't want this uh text to be popular i want it to be uh something else so what i can do is uh, i'm gonna fit this into this uh in over here like so so you know you guys can you guys can have a Go look at it and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on this popular and I can double click on that or oh, let's go into the design mode I can open this up and let's say I can call this um, must see places or something and what that does it automatically updates in the live preview which is happening and go to my prototype you see it's already there so that's a very cool feature in Adobe XD Alright guys, so the next one is going to be an amazing feature, which is the most useful feature um, to designers when building your portfolio. So if I go here to the share option, you see we have uh, the link that has been created, but also there is an option called as embed. If I just click on that, you see we get this kind of a code and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this code and I can come here to my Behance portfolio or Behance page. So this is my portfolio. If you guys want to check it out, link in the description if you guys are interested. Uh, but anyway, so if I go to to one of my projects and let's actually edit it so if I go and click on edit it's gonna open up my project editor and uh, as you can see I have uh, four projects over here uh, these are just simple Josie designs that I made for a couple of eSport teams but anyway uh, what I can do is I can come here to the center and I can you know when I cover over the 
this part you see i get all these options and i can click on this one and that's going to give me this option to embed media and all i have to do is just press ctrl v so as you can see over here it says embeds from adobe experience design adobe voice bandcamp daily motion blah 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 and all these places and all i have to do is just paste that and click on embed and as you can see it's going to embed that prototype and what you can even do is you can click on it and it's going to work and i can click over here and it's going to take me to the next page which is very very useful if i go ahead and just click on save and once it's saved i can go into preview and in preview you can see this is basically what a user will see and i can click on it and it's going to work for the user who is viewing my uh design also so which is very useful and very handy and you know it's very eye catchy to person who's looking at it and is a good plus point to your portfolio as well okay guys so moving on to tip number nine so this is an option of the repeat grid now repeat grid is the most trending and most happening feature of adobe xd so let's go ahead and show you what that is so let's go ahead and create a square like so and once i create the square i can click on the repeat grid feature and then just you know move on move this out till i get a couple of grids and there you go and if you want to replace this with images as i have done over here what you can do is let's go ahead and uh, grab a couple of images let's say five images and then just select all those and drop them onto one and you see it automatically gets cropped into all this and looks amazing and you can click on this and choose ungroup and all these become individual elements which is pretty awesome and that saved you a lot of time now let's say you want to do that with text as well you can definitely do that so let's go and grab a text and i'm going to call this uh number just number one just a random thing uh let me just scale this up so you guys can see this okay and uh let's actually move this over over here and i can click on repeat grid again and this time move this around like so and we can even move this around this way if you want but let's keep it like so and the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go open up my folder which has all these uh you know elements and i have this text file which is called name so if i open that up you see i have a couple of places that i had named and all you have to do is select this and throw that on the first one and that's going to go ahead and update all these for you now it does look a little bit crazy uh, that's because you need to move around with the spacing and you can right click and choose ungroup grid and you can go ahead and start deleting all the ones you don't want and there you go your text is ready to use all right moving on to tip number 10. now i have a rectangle and i want to create a box like this and uh, i'm going to go ahead and just create a rectangle like so most of the boxes um our call to action uh, elements are basically a shape like this but maybe i don't want a shape like this i want a shape different so what i would have to do is if i want to individually select and change the radius of this i would have to click on this button which is going to split that into four different um corners and i can individually go and you know change it like so but a quicker way and a faster way is to hold on alt on your keyboard and i can click on one of the corners and i can just move this and that's going to move only that and i don't have to go ahead and change any of these over here i can select this and do the same as well and we have a cool awesome shape okay so the next one is a very handy and a useful one so let's say i select this this text and basically you can do this for any element you don't have to do it only for text so let's say i select this text and without touching anything else if i just press what the numbers from one to zero on my keyboard let's say i want to press three what that does is it reduces the opacity to 30 percent instantly if i set it to zero it sets it to 100 if i set it to one it sets it to 10 so i can click on five i can click on seven nine three whatever i want and it's going to automatically set that now as you can see if i click on two numbers very fast it's going to turn it into a number like so so if i go ahead and type 67 you see i get 67 but if i type six it becomes 60 and if i press 7 after some time it becomes 70 if i press 56 it's going to make it 56 instantly so that's a very cool way of changing the opacity now the final tip tip number 12 is to switch between the design and the prototype section now instead of clicking on prototype and design which does take a few little extra effort but all you can do is press ctrl tab and that's going to turn it uh switch you to the prototype and ctrl tab to move to design ctrl tab ctrl tab and there we go 
So that's pretty much it on all the tall power tips in Adobe XD. So if you guys learned something from this video and I'm sure that it's going to help you out in your further designing in Adobe XD. If you have any questions or any requests, feel free to reach out to me in the comment sections, Twitter or Instagram or even send me an email. I reply to all my messages and notifications and don't forget to check out my master course if you want to learn all about Adobe XD and I will be releasing another tutorial at the end of this month when the November update is out. So make sure to subscribe and get ready to watch that. So thank you guys once again so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. So till then take care and bye bye.